The hybrid crosses are a little bit more complicated, um, but they're not really that much harder. Uh, if we, there's two approaches um, to doing a die hybrid cross, and I'll go through both of them, and whichever one works best for you, it's totally up to you. And you can kind of read what I have here about die hybrid crosses and why we do them. Basically, the idea is this. If we're looking at something and we want to know about two traits, not just one, how do we go about doing that? So, for example, in the example I have here, if I want to look at round versus uh, wrinkled for a plant, and that same plan, I wanted to look at yellow versus green. Is there a way for me to kind of go about figuring this out? There is. It's called a dihybrid cross. Okay, and you can kind of take a look at this down below. If I were to do the cross, here's how it'll turn out. And I'll kind of show you what that's going to look like here. Okay, if we had two individuals that were both homozygote um, for the two conditions. So in this case, this individual is homozygote dominant for round and yellow. This one is uh, homozygote recessive for wrinkled and green. And if we were to do that, remembering back to Mendel's laws, law of independent assortment and law of segregation basically states, I can't pass both these on. So I could pass this with this, this one with this one, this one with this one, and so on. You have four different options here. Same with this down here. And then you recombine them to actually make the... Uh, the gamete, or the, or the excuse me, the offspring. I'll kind of show you that here in the next diagram. Okay. All right, so you can see here, guys. I've taken these charts, and all I've done is taken the different possible combinations. So which R can go? Oops. So you know this R can go with that, and it combined them. And I could complete this if I wanted to, and put you know here that R, and that R, and that Y, and that Y, and same thing down here. But notice what would be the phenotypic ratio for the F1. They would all be round and yellow. What would be the genotypic? I said that in the wrong order, but I'm posting it. Round and yellow. The genotypic ratio would be all big R, little r, big Y, little y. But remember back to Mendel, it wasn't the F1 that really mattered, it's the F2. So what we're going to do then is cross this down here and that's going to get us our next one. Okay, and so all you got to do is create a giant punt square to get this done. And here it is. So what I've done here is I've said that we have this R right there, and that R goes to that, that Y, that Y, and we do all the different combinations. And what we end up with is on a diver cross, rarely will I ask you for the genotypic ratio, but I will ask you for the phenotypic ratio. And in this case, there are nine that are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that are round and wrinkled. There are three that are uh, round and green, three yellow and wrinkled, and one that is uh, green and wrinkled. So all I've really done is done a diver cross following uh, Mendel's law of independent assortment and segregation, and in doing so, I've created this large Punnett square. Notice, when you do it like this, it's all about the setup. The setup's what matter. And I'll kind of do some practice problems to kind of work through it. But if I can do this and match all the possible gametes, and I set them up on the outside, I just combine them together. And we put the letters that correspond to the correct letters to help figure it out. Let me show you some examples. So here's kind of the data from that previous page showing what we have. Once again, uh, what I'm going to be more concerned with is the phenotypic ratio, not the genotypic. If you think back to Mendel, the Mendel's law of independent assortment stated that the genes will actually separate, and that's why we actually see these different combinations. So what this diagram down here is done is just shown that that this individual could produce a gamete that was capital A, capital B, capital A, lowercase b, lowercase a, capital B, and so on. And then all we do is recombine it. That's one way to do a dihybrid cross. So let's go ahead and do that on this one here. So basically what's happening is it gives characteristics. We want a male rabbit, and the male rabbit has the genotype big G, big G, little b, little b, and it's going to be crossed with a female rabbit with that genotype. 
And I'm going to want you to pause it and go ahead and work on that problem right now. And I'm going to work it on a piece of paper and show you kind of what I have as well. So I've created my Punnett square. And one of the things I want you to notice is when I take a look at the number of gametes, there's some um, repetitive in it. And so what's important to note here is because it's repetitive, I'm going to get the same results. I don't have to do the cross for everything. So I can actually not do that one because that results would be the same as this one. That would be the same as that one. So I can eliminate those. And additionally, all of those are the same gametes. Therefore, I really only have to do this problem filling it in that way. If you wanted to and you filled it in the whole other way, 100% fine, nothing's wrong with that. I'm going to do it that way as well to kind of show you um, your data, how it should actually look. So there's our completed Punnett square. Once again, notice that how I did that, we could do all the counting here, but look, this column and this column are exactly the same. And this column and this column are exactly the same. And actually, all of this is the same. So only data I really need is this to this. There will be one there will be one that will be gray and black eyes, and there will be one that will be gray and red eyes. Okay, so our ratio would be 1 to 1, gray to black, doing a Punnett square. Now, once again, I could have counted all these out, but if I were to do that, it would be basically... If you count them out, 8 would be gray and black, 8 would be gray and red. And there's our data. So that's just working a Punnett square doing that. Now, there's easier ways to do these types of problems as well, and I'll go over those in class next time. But this is the full Punnett square, the large sample. What I want you to do is I'm going to give you an example here, and I want you to practice this one um, for homework. So there's a man who is heterozygote, okay, so there's going to be a man who's heterozygote for both a widow's peak and a hitchhiker's thumb. Remember, widow's peak is dominant. And he's going to marry a woman who is a heterozygote for a widow's peak, but is does not have a hitchhiker's thumb, has a normal hitchhiker's thumb. And I want you to do a Punnett square for those characteristics the way I showed you and bring that to class. And that's basically where I'm going to leave you. Doing the pun square, I'm going to add. If you want some more help with this, you can always, all I did was Google Khan Academy um, Dihybrid Crosses, and they actually have on their website some practice problems that you can do. Um, you can work them and have the answer, and they can kind of actually show you a video or a hint for each one of those. You can have a couple different problems, and um, they actually, like I said, go through those. And if you don't understand, on, on this side of the document over here, you can actually see the uh, over here some different links that can help you explain some of the probability and stuff that we've talked about in class. So it's another option for you. Do please do the problem I did prior to this and bring it to class. Uh, we'll actually start off class with a uh, die-hybrid cross problem to work on. That's all I got. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day.